Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about amiodarone and its toxicity. Amiodarone is one of the medications that is used to treat life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias. It is one of the potassium channel blockers that belongs to the class three antiarrhythmic agents. However, this medication is associated with a number of toxicities affecting the multiple organs in the body. Therefore, this medication should be used carefully and it should be closely monitored under medical supervision. This video answers many questions about amiodarone toxicity, how it should be managed, and how to use this medication. Please hit the like button if you really enjoy this video. Please do subscribe and hit the bell icon to get more interesting videos. So without any delay, let's switch to the main topic. Is amiodarone a CCB? Amiodarone is not a CCB. It is not the calcium channel blocker. It should not be confused with another medication, amlodipine, which is a calcium channel blocker. Amiodarone is used to treat life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias, whereas amlodipine is used to treat hypertension. Amiodarone is classified as a potassium channel blocker, whereas amlodipine is a calcium channel blocker. How it is useful? Amiodarone is only used for life-threatening arrhythmias because of substantial toxicity. Due to the risk of its management producing toxicity in many of the organs, this medication is only used to treat life-threatening arrhythmias. Under hospitalization, it should be administered with professional medical supervision. It is difficult to maintain amiodaron effectively and safely, as it poses a significant risk to the patients. The patient should be hospitalized while IV loading doses are administered. It may take one week to show a proper response from this medication. The absorption of the amiodaron is variable. Even the elimination is also not equal in all the people. Therefore, maintaining the dose is very difficult, and it should be completely individualized. In a few people, the doses may be either reduced or temporarily discontinued, based on the response and the levels of this medication in the body. After a discontinuation of amiodarone therapy, the recurrence of life-threatening arrhythmias may be possible in the variable time periods. It may reappear within a week or two months. Therefore, the risk may be increased during this transition time and may require hospitalization. How does it work in treating arrhythmias? Amiodarone is a class three antiarrhythmic agent. This drug works by multiple mechanisms. Even though it is primarily classified as a potassium channel blocker, it can also affect other ion channels like sodium and calcium. It also inhibits adrenergic stimulation. Therefore, this medication can show all class activities. It markedly prolongs the action potential and repolarization. Due to the prolongation of repolarization, it can reduce reentry type arrhythmias. It also decreases the AV conduction and reduces the function of the sinus node. Amiodaron is classified as a potassium channel blocker. However, it is not classified as a calcium channel blocker because it also affects many other ion channels, including its main action on potassium. How it affects your lungs. Amiodarone may cause pulmonary injury within days to weeks of treatment with the IV administration. It may produce pulmonary infiltration, bronchospasm, wheezing, fever, dyspnea, and cough. It may also result in a condition called hemoptysis, where blood during a cough can be observed. It may also produce blood in the mucus coming from the lungs. In some of the people, it may also cause low oxygen levels and respiratory failure. Therefore, these symptoms should be properly monitored. A chest x-ray and pulmonary function test should be done to assess the condition. It can also increase the risk of pulmonary fibrosis that results in thickening of lung walls, leading to shortness of breath and persistent cough. In case of any development of symptoms of pulmonary toxicity, an alternative agent should be used. This pulmonary toxicity may be treated by administration of prednisone at a dose of 40 to 60 milligrams per day. What is the proarrhythmic effect? Amiodarone can produce prolongation of acuity interval in the ECG. The property of this medication is called the proarrhythmic effect. It may cause worsening of existing cardiac arrhythmias, or it can precipitate new arrhythmias leading to fatal outcomes. It may produce one of the conditions called torsades de points that is associated with prolongation of the QD intervals when amiodarone was admitted by intravenous route. Among 2 to 5% of people, this proarrhythmic effect can be observed. Due to a long half-life of amiodarone, the proarrhythmic effects can be observed for a longer time. In order to reduce the risk of QD prolongation, any pre-existing conditions like hypokalemia, low levels of potassium, hypomagnesemia, 
low levels of magnesium, hypocalcemia, low levels of calcium should be corrected before initiating the treatment with amiodarone. Electrolyte and acid-base balance should be properly maintained, particularly in people with severe diarrhea or people who are taking diuretics and laxatives. In people treated with systemic corticosteroids or antifungal agents like intravenous amphotericin B, the risk may be more enhanced. Bradycardia and atrioventricular block can also be observed. This bradycardia can be reduced by slow infusion rate. However, in a few people, it may be required to be discontinued. Under severe conditions, a pacemaker is required to restore the condition. Using alternative agents. Substitution of other antiarrhythmic agents for amiodron is somewhat difficult because it shows complex pharmacokinetics. It has a prolonged duration of action due to a prolonged half-life. Its absorption and elimination are variable in individuals. Therefore, it is very difficult to predict the exact pharmacokinetics of amiodron. Substitution of other antiarrhythmic agents may produce increased risk of drug interactions and fatal cardiac effects. How does that affect your thyroid hormones? Amiodron can produce alterations in the thyroid levels. It can produce hyperthyroidism. It may not be treated by radioactive iodine because of low uptake of radioiodine. Antithyroid drugs, beta blockers, and corticosteroids may be used to control the symptoms of hyperthyroidism. However, antithyroid drugs may take some time to reduce the symptoms of amiodron induced hyperthyroidism. On the other hand, amiodron can also reduce your thyroid levels, leading to hypothyroidism. It may be a direct effect or it may be due to the resolution of the preceding amiodarone-induced hyperthyroidism. Around 2-10% to of the people may have hypothyroidism. This can be minimized by reducing its dose. In a few people, it may be required to be discontinued. Sometimes it may also need thyroid hormone supplements in order to restore the condition. How it affects your blood pressure. Hypotension is one of the important side effects of amiodarone. Slow infusion rates can reduce the risk. However, in a few people, it may require the use of a few medications to correct the drop in blood pressure. It may be corrected by the use of vasopressor drugs, positive enotropic agents, or even volume expansion. The infusion rate should be closely monitored while using this amiodron, and it should not exceed the recommended rates. Is it staining your cornea? Amiodron can produce corneal microdeposits in a few people. These corneal deposits may not be observed by the naked eye. However, they may produce few symptoms like visual halos and blurred vision. Around 10% of the people may observe corneal deposits with the use of amiodarone. These are reversible, and they can be restored by reduction of the dose or by termination of the treatment. What is its effect on the liver? With the use of amiodarone, you may observe a mild elevation of liver enzymes. However, at higher maintenance doses, it may produce life-threatening hepatic injury. Therefore, the liver functionality should be regularly checked while using this medication. Other effects. Amiodarone may also produce peripheral neuropathy on chronic administration. It may be resolved on discontinuation of the therapy. It also causes photosensitivity. Therefore, avoid excessive exposure to sunlight while using this medication. When it is given by infusion, it can produce inflammation of the veins at the infusion site. When the intravenous concentrations are above 3 mg per ml, it may be associated with inflammation of peripheral veins. These are the interesting facts about amiodarone and its toxicity. That's all guys. Thanks for watching this video. Share your experience and how it works for you in the comment section below. Have a great day.